Okay, so I know uh, my talk is titled, or it's given the title of uh, basic, uh, general problem solving strategies. Uh, oh, but it should be rather apparent that you can't really uh, discuss every problem solving strategy in any talk, uh, let alone a fairly short talk. So I, I will not attempt to do so, uh, not attempt to claim to do so. But uh, I will be going over a specific topic, a few pro some problems in a specific topic that I hope uh, through examples will quite illustrate uh, illustrate quite a few uh, problem solving strategies. And these strategies don't necessarily uh, aren't necessarily specific to this topic. So uh, this being a rather na narrow topic. Uh, it, 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 you, you can be assured that you, you'll find some usefulness for this in uh, not just these these types of problems. Um, anyway, uh, so I will be so seeing that the, the, the next lecture, Neil, I think is discussing inequalities. I will be doing something similar. I'll do a particular type of uh, co combinatorics problems that basically uh, evolve into inequalities. Uh, uh, there are a lot of common torques problems that do involve inequalities. Uh, these, the, the problems I will be presenting are particular, uh, inequalities are particularly involved in here. So it's, it's a, it contains substantial amounts of combo and algebra. And uh, I will be leaving out uh, extremal graph theory, which really deserves a lecture of its own, but uh, for time constraints and such, we'll not be going over any extremal graph theory. Anyway, uh, I think we'll get started with problems. Uh, you'll get a hang of this through uh, our example problems. Okay, so, uh, our first problem. Let me, uh, there we go. Okay, so suppose we have a sequence of positive integers, uh, or over all such, okay, uh, over all sequences uh, of positive, in, uh, uh, let's write this as A, uh, a sequence of uh, 2001 terms of positive integers. So over all such sequences, let's find the maximum, uh, find the maximum number of uh, triplets I, J, and K that satisfy uh, this relation, or I should specify triplets I, J, K with, uh, with uh, I less than J less than K, and they're all between 1 and 2001, satisfying Uh, a sub k equals a sub j plus 1 uh, equals a sub i plus 2. Okay. Let's see. So, how would we do this? Uh... What matters here is really just the values of uh, terms in a sequence. So we can reframe the sequence as, so let's, we want to find the number of triplets with, uh, tri triplets of terms that are three consecutive positive integers. So 
uh, that would be, for example, the number of triplets uh, of that are of values one, two, and three, plus the number of triplets values two, three, and four, three, four, and five, so on and so forth. So let's reframe this in terms of the values to solve this. Uh, so for each for each number n, for each positive integer n, let's define uh, xn to be the number of terms uh, of terms of a that are equal to n. Okay, and now our desired number of triplets i j k in terms of x i would be uh, we can get an upper bound. We we just need an upper bound on the number of such triplets. Uh, so for the number of triplets with values e equal to one, two, and three, well, uh, that would be at most x1 times x2 times x3. Uh, it would be equal when all the terms of that are equal to one come before all the terms that are equal to two, come, which in turn come before all the terms that are equal to three. Uh, but regardless, in any uh, 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 regardless, the number of i j k with a i equal to so let's be specific here, the number of triplets i j k we're counting uh, the number of triplets of i j k i less than j less than k in the appropriate appropriate bounds with a sub i equal to one, a sub j equal to two, and a sub k equals three, and this of course is at most x one times x two times x three. There are at most x1 values of i, x2 values of j, x3 values of k. Uh, so summing this up, our total is at most, uh, the des desired values at, at most, we'll write this as sigma from 1 to infinity, xi times xi plus 1 times xi plus 2. Now, this is written as an inf infinite sum, but in reality, it's just a finite sum because we know, well, each xi is a positive integer, or a non-negative integer, and we have x1 plus x2 plus so on and so forth uh, equals 2001. There are 2001 terms in total. So there is a maximum, some, lar uh, some largest k for which f of k, or x, of k, x sub k is greater than zero. So there is, at some point, this xi sequence uh, becomes all zeros. That's the point. There uh, exists uh, k such for which x of k is greater than zero, but x of k plus one equals x of k plus two equals so on and so forth. These all equal to zero. So there is an end to this sum. Okay, and now we've just reduced this common torques problem into a purely algebraic inequality problem. We want to maximize this sum. Okay, and here's the technique for uh, for this uh, for for doing so. So let me before we get to this, let me just talk in big picture terms for a second. Uh, we what we first did here was we did a reframing of the problem, rewriting the problem in terms of different values uh, that allows us to actually count the number of such triplets. Uh, that's like a strategy, a tactic. Now we get to a technique. Uh, smoothing is a, it, so this technique is called smoothing. Uh, it, it applies to a number of inequality problems. And here's how it will work in this context. So the last possibly non-zero term of this sum, as we know, is uh, x of k minus 2 times x of k minus 1 times x, x of k. Uh, the term before that would be x of k minus 3, x of k minus 2, x of k minus 1. And of course, there are terms before this. But let's just deal with uh, these term, these two terms for now. 
uh, okay, now, so this is, this here is equal to x of k minus, minus 2, x of k minus 1, times x of k plus x of k minus 3. So you can notice uh, if you keep x of k minus 2 and x of k minus 1 constant, uh, and you change, well, if you change xk, then you have to change another value as well, because the sum of all uh, the xi's is constant. So what we can do is we can say, we'll change xk and xk minus 3, minus 3 uh, to be, just, just disappeared, okay. Uh, okay, should be fine. Uh, to be specific, we'll, we'll keep, uh, we'll, the only values we'll change are, uh, okay, uh, are x sub k and x sub k minus 3. Um, and we'll see, uh, as we change these two values, at what point is this locally maximized? So smoothing is very much a local uh, technique. It's... It's really helpful to think of terms and uh, uh, think of uh, uh, combo problems or even inequality problems like these in terms of this being either global or local. You can think of uh, lo local would mean, for example, a local maximum or local minimum, where you're keeping most stuff constant and you're only changing bits of the problem, and you're saying. Uh, at what point, uh, which values of these bits would optimize this locally and use these conditions to develop globally. Uh, whereas globally, you would just uh, try to optimize the sum once and for all, for one uh, the entire thing at, uh, uh, all at once. So here we're just doing a very local thing. And what we can notice is that if we have, uh, let's say we have uh, x, some value of x sub k, uh, x sub k minus three and x sub k, if we change this into uh, x sub k minus three plus x sub k and zero, meaning that we now let the new value of x sub k be this, and the new value of x sub k minus three be this. If we do so, then, okay, well, this is not changed here, uh, but uh, the terms involving x sub k minus 3, uh, you've got some previous two terms that also involve x sub k minus 3, and these terms are certainly not decreased. They're possibly increased. So what we've discovered is that uh, wh whenever you do this kind of a change, you always uh, don't decrease the sum. You don't decrease the sum, and you'll probably increase the sum. Which means that the maximum value of this sum is achieved when x of k equals zero. Max. So, I'll write. Achieved at x of k equals zero. And basically, you can, uh, you can do the same thing again for x of k minus one, x of k minus two, so on and so forth, and you'll get that uh, all values down to x4 are, uh, optimally, all values down to x4 are equal to zero. So we're just left with the, the maximum would be when we have just x1, x2, or x3, where x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals 2001. And this, indeed, the maximum value would be 667 cubed. Uh, this also tells us when equality would be achieved. Indeed, equality does is achieved when you have uh, when you have something like a, let's see, uh, yeah, the first 667 terms are equal to one. The next 667 terms are equal to two. The next 667 terms are equal to 3. Okay, so that was the solution to number 1. Uh, uh, shall we say not? Um, I, it's straightforward if you know what you're doing. 
we can put it that put it that way. Uh, I don't mean to insult anyone who don't who who doesn't find this straight, straightforward, but uh, if you get a mastering of uh, smoothing and everything we did in this problem, uh, then it should become straightforward. Uh, but there's an alternative solution. That's quite a nice solution, uh, a shorter solution as well. And that would be this. Uh, so a more combinatorial solution. Uh, alternate. And that is, uh, let's just say that there are R numbers in this sequence that are uh, congruent to zero mod three. Uh, let's say they're S numbers congruent to one mod three and T numbers congruent to two mod three. Then anytime we have such a valid uh, triple IJK where a sub k equals a sub j plus one equals a sub i plus two, then, well, a sub k, a sub j, and a sub i are going to be distinct mod three. And that means that uh, the, the, the maximum we can have is just r s t, uh, which we know by aim oh, because we know their total of uh, 2001 terms, we immediately get that the maximum is at most 667 cubed. Now, because of constraints like uh, i is less than j is less than k, normally this would be a very weak bound that there's you wouldn't really expect to work. But uh, knowing the answer, knowing what the equality case is like, getting the equality case is not too difficult. Uh, and knowing knowing that at the equality it's sorted, non-decreasing, uh, this does become sharp at equality. And so this is why this also gives us six, 667 cube as desired. Okay. So it turns out I, I do like explaining things in detail, but there are more stuff that we'll get to. Uh, one, you can keep putting your questions in the chat. I don't actually see any questions so far, but uh, you're welcome to do so at any time. I'll just move on for time's sake. Okay, um, here's the second problem. Let's say we have 100 points in a plane. in the plane uh find the maximum number of triplets of points a b c find triplets of points a b c a b c among these 100 points uh triplets such that uh a and B, well, let's put these planes on the coordinate plane. Uh, A and B have uh, have the same y-coordinate. B and C have the same x-coordinate. Uh, x so we're looking for points like something like the uh, this a b and c find a maximum number of such triplets uh so it doesn't hurt first of all to try to see what the equality case is uh it turns out that the equality case is the uh perhaps what you would first expect it to be which is for these 100 points to be uh to lie in a 10 by 10 grid uh, in which case you'll have, uh, how many triplets will you have? You'll have, there are 100 points, and for each for each point B, there are nine values of, uh, nine points A and nine points C. So you'll, the answer should be, we suspect, 8,100. And doing equality case also gave us the, uh, the benefit of 
having an idea of, uh, about where to approach this problem. As we counted equality case by looking at the middle point, B, uh, this suggests perhaps we can do the same in general, getting our proving that A8100 is the upper bound. Okay, um, let's, def let's define some uh, terms. Uh, we know that the only thing that matters here is whether points lie on the same uh, vertical line or whether they lie on the same horizontal line. So the only objects we really need to consider are uh, all the horizontal lines that pass through some uh, that pass through at least one point and all the vertical lines that pass through at least one point. So let's let the set X be the set of horizontal lines through a point. And let's let Y be the same thing, same thing, uh, but vertical. Okay, and let's also let, f for convenience, uh, if we have a line L, we're going to want to talk about how many how many points lie on such a line L. So let's define A sub L to be the number of points on line L. Okay, with that out of the way, let's now we count by the middle point. Uh, so each. Uh, for each middle point, uh, for, let's say for each point B, the number of triplets uh, with B as the middle middle point is equal to, well, that would be uh, that would be the A sub, which we call this uh, terminology. The horizontal. Okay, so the uh, we'll, we'll we'll describe this in words, and I'll write something else. Uh, the number of triplets with B as the middle point is simply uh, the number of points on the horizontal line that passes through B minus one times the number of points on the vertical line passing through B minus one. Okay. Uh, now, so. Uh, okay, so that would mean each point is going to, okay, so each point is, is going to correspond to some vertical line and some horizontal line. It's going to correspond to a pair of vertical line, uh, horizontal line, vertical line. And these pairs are all distinct because any vertical line and a horizontal line intersect at just one point. So we're summing through, well... We're summing through some pairs. Let's write this as L1, L2, uh, belonging in uh, X times Y. Set notation distress means we have L1 in X and L2 times in Y. Uh, we're summing through some of these pairs, uh, such that well, we can be specific. L1 intersects L2, something like that, where L1 and L2 meet at a point. We're summing through all of these pairs. Uh, A sub L1 minus 1 times A sub L2 minus 1. Okay, so L1, L2, so let's look at this. L, the pair L1, L2 uh, belongs each such pair belongs in what we call x set x times set, set y which is just basically if you know what set multiplication is it basically is just uh the set of all pairs uh of objects a b such that a belongs in x and b belongs in y now this is so it's difficult to deal with this here because we don't know whether a horizontal line and a vertical line will actually intersect at a point. Uh, so why don't we do just do some bad bounding, uh, keeping in mind in the fact that at equality case, every horizontal line and every vertical line do indeed meet at a point. So what if we just 
take the sum over all elements of x times y. And if if you do so, well, then you can you can split the sum into a, a sum of stuff uh, over x and a sum of stuff over y multiplied together because now they're independent. L1 and L2 are now independent as we take them over uh, the entire set x times y. To be specific, this would give us, this is less than L in x of a sub L uh, minus 1. And here we have L in y of a sub L minus 1. Okay, and we actually know what these terms are equal to. Uh, this here means the uh, summed over all ho horizontal lines. The uh, no, the number of points on so okay, so this sum is equal to let's write this as L in x of a sub l that minus the uh, minus the the size of x to count for minus one in each term where this is summed uh, over uh, or this is some uh, abs uh, size of x times so that minus one will become minus size of x and we know what this is this is just summing over each line the number of points on each line and that would just equal the total number of points which is just uh so let's for completeness this term gives us uh, sum of L and Y, A sub L minus Y. And this is just equal to 100 minus the size of X times 100 minus the size of Y. So we just want to know what restrictions we have uh, on size of X and size of Y. Uh, the most basic restriction is that we have size of x times size of y is less than or equal to 100 because every point is it's got to it has to be the intersection of some horizontal line and some vertical line uh, so the total uh, if so all of uh, the total number of intersections of horizontal lines and vertical lines is going to be uh, at most uh, 100 uh, at most or at least let's see can check uh, uh, uh sorry this is at least correct thank you at least 100 okay and now this becomes a rather not too difficult inequality which i'll leave it to yourself and you can check that this is less than or equal to 8100 uh so this is the problem uh each of the n squared cells of an n by n grid is colored either black or white. Let AI denote the number of white cells in the ith row and BI denote the number of black, cell, black cells in the ith column. And we want to determine the maximum value of the sum, sum of AI, BI over all coloring schemes of the grid. Okay. So... Uh, if you play around with with this problem, it, you can pretty quickly suspect what the equality case would be, because you want uh, so you want a, if the if the row has a lot of white cells, then you want the if column to have a lot of black cells, and uh, well, it's. It, it, Playing around with this problem can't really be, uh, so speaking of problem solving techniques, playing around with the problem, just trying it out is a must. Uh, and there's really no substitute for that. Uh, I can't substitute it with me speaking, but I will say that if you do so, you should get uh, that the equality case looks something like, and I'll put, uh, I'll, I'll take a picture uh, uh, it, it will look like a staircase um, can we get this in the uh, right. okay well if, 
Okay, I think it's not too important. Important. To, uh, anyway, that that does turn out to be the ma maximum. Uh, you'll have you'll need that construction to show that the maximum is achievable, i.e., the equality case. But the main part of the the hardest part of this problem is. Uh, okay, well, first, firstly, some observations. Uh, if you swap, if say, if you swap two columns, then the contents of a row don't change. Uh, each uh, AI value does not change. Um, and neither does, uh, well, the, and BI do change in that they switch in ordering. So for example, if you swap the first two columns, then no value AI changes, so AI all, all remain the same, and what uh, B1 and B2 are swapped, and that's the only thing that happens. So this tells us that we can just freely move around the columns, uh, just order the columns however you want, uh, that would change the order of BI, that would permute BI in some manner without changing AI which is really useful. Uh, and you might recognize this as suggesting rearrangement, which is to say that uh, we want to pair, to maximize the sum, we want to, uh, uh, where you can permute BI and as a matter of fact, AI, uh, however you want. Uh, you want to pair large values of AI with large values of BI. Okay, so to be specific, uh, we can, okay, um, okay, so uh, that's the, yeah, that, 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 that's the first observation. Uh, we, I do want to draw this, but uh, I'm not sure if I, uh, it's well. It's not good if I don't draw draw this, and it's not good if uh, drawing will be. I'm not sure how I can draw this. Anyway, uh, let me first. I found a I found a picture for equality case. The equality case. So let me uh, first post this. So this is what equality case would look like. Um, uh, as you can tell, row for example, row one has a lot of white squares, and column one has a lot of black squares. Same thing for row two and column two, and so on and so forth. Uh, and you can just think about if, if if you were to permute the columns, say, if you were to swap any two columns, you can see how it decreases it decreases the sum. The sum is optimized uh, as rearrangement would tell us. Uh, so, uh, okay. Let's, uh, I do want to make sure I get my directions right, left, right, up, down. Uh, okay, so from, okay, from this, uh, from our first ob observation, let's write this algebraically, we can say that we, uh, we can uh, get A1, uh, we can order, uh, get an ordering to all the A's and all the B's. So this, we can, so we have uh, this, which we can do by permuting rows and columns. So uh, we have a, it, it, the uh, AIs are decreasing and BIs are decreasing. Now, how do we get this to a staircase? Well, uh, so this right here is not sufficient for uh, restricting this to just the staircase example. Uh, to get this down to staircase, you still need to, uh, for example, I'll give an example, row two. We can say that row two has seven white squares, but how do we know that they're all the white squares, uh, the seven rightmost white squares? Well, it turns out that uh, you can basically uh, you can swap any 
white square with a black black square to to the right of it. Uh, so if you got a white square and you've got a black square to to its right, I claim that you can just swap these two and your sum will not decrease. Uh, and that is because, uh, see, look at look at what happens to our values of AI and BI. Uh, doing this will not affect our AIs, all the row numbers, uh, all the number of white cells in the row in the, each row. Uh, but as for columns, we're gonna have let's say, let's say this is column uh i and this is column j where we have i is uh if you swap this then what happens to b i and b j well b i uh which is the number of black squares would increase by one so this adds you add one to b i and you subtract one to bj and because bi so in the sum in this sum here uh, bi is multiplied to ai and bj is multiplied to bj so the only relevant the only relevant terms in the sum are ai bi and aj bj so what happens to this sum as you add one to bi and as you subtract one to bj which is the effect of swapping a white cell it, it white cell in column i and a black cell in column j that are in the same row well uh this here you would add a i to the sum from this term and from this term you would subtract a j from the sum and because the a's are all ordered well the net effect is a i minus a j which is greater than or equal to zero so Swapping any black square that's to the right of a white square uh, does not decrease the sum. And that is essentially how you get to this stair staircase. But once again, uh, as we had in the first problem, uh, while this is, again, uh, straightforward in the sense that you don't have to be, uh, there's nothing too clever about this. Uh, as in, I'll, I'll be uh, specific. Uh, this it, it this technique is rather standard. You can it, you'll find it in a number of problems. Uh, but there's also a clever solution to this, which is combinatorial and also less complicated. It's really quite brilliant. So I'll share this. Uh, okay, uh, as we have. Like uh, with the useful uh, diagram we have over here, we can naturally assign each square a coordinate x, comma y. Okay, and what does our sum count? Our sum, uh, our sum counts the. In fact, uh, uh, so we need uh, a cell. So, okay, let's write this out here. Our sum counts something, and that something is AI is the number of white cells in the i-th row, and B, BI is the number of black cells in the i-th column. So it's the number of pairs of white cell, uh, white, it's the number of white cell, black, black cell pairs, such that the row number of one of them is equal to the column number of the other. Now, to write this in algebraic terms, this would be, uh, it counts the number of triplets of x, y, and z, such that uh, x, comma, y is white, and y, comma, z is black. Interesting. So, we've got x comma y y comma z what about z comma x that really bugs us to kind of complete the symmetry and and we'll get a z comma x by uh changing this triplet to something like y z x uh it, for y z x it, it's uh it would be you would be looking at whether y z is white and z x is black 
So anyway, uh, we're look let's since we're considering x, y, and y, z, why why not consider z, x as well? That's a y. Okay. Uh, if if zx is black, er, uh, let's first. Okay, if zx is white, then among the triplets x, y, z, uh, y, z, x, and z, x, y. Well, y, z, x is a triplet that that satisfies this because we define it so. Uh, y, z, x does not because y, z is black is a black cell and z x y does not satisfy this because x y is a white cell so out of these three only x y z satisfies this in this case now what about if z x is black then again looking at our triples x y z uh, y z x z x y Uh, well, X, Y, Z satisfies this once again by our uh, definition. Y, Z, X does not because Y, Z is uh, black and Z, X, Y does not because Z, X is black. So, wow. Uh, regardless of the color of Z, X, we found that if X, Y, Z satisfies this condition, as in it's counted into sum, then y zx is not counted in a sum and zxy is not counted in a sum well such uh mappings of for so you can notice here that we are bijecting uh it's not a one to one bijection it's a one to three bijection but where we're bijecting for okay so for each uh pair that is counted in a sum we've got two that are not counted in the sum and as you uh and you, you can also check one thing that also needs needs to be checked is if you assign any colors to x x x y y z and z x and z x assign them any colors black or white you'll have at, at most one of the tri tri triples x, y, z, y, z, x, or z, x, y can be counted into sum, at most one. Uh, we've, in fact, it turns out that we'll have, we'll have one counted into sum if these uh, colors are not all the same, and if these colors are all the same, then none are counted in, in the sum. But we realized something quite amazing, which is that uh, if we have uh, x, if we have x, y, z, y, z, x, and z, x, y, at most one of them can be counted in the sum. That gives us an upper bound, and this upper bound is well. First of all, you want these tri triplets to be dis distinct, and they are distinct when x, y, and z are not all equal. So. That would be a total of n cubed minus n triplets uh, divided by three. Uh, the one thing that remains is you just have to look at triple uh, uh, triples x x x. But uh, because the uh, pairs x x and x x and x x are all the same color, uh, you're not going to have this counted in the sum you're not going to have to satisfy this condition. So, by our bijection, we just found that the answer is at most n cubed minus n over 3. Uh, so it's a really beautiful solution to what is otherwise not uh, quite a nice problem, but this this solution is really quite nice. And I'm, I'm not good with uh, keeping my time low, um are you guys interested in pre doing one more problem or do you want to uh, let's let the audience uh decide yeah let, let's run democracy hmm? 
What was that? Run democracy. Democracy sounds good, uh, but that works only if there's particip participation. So uh, I think we need voter turnout, though. Yes, uh, please. Uh, yeah, so uh, feel uh, we welcome your. Uh, I think we can just let people use a simple yes or no, like. Oh wait, can yeah, we? Sure, good idea. Wait, uh, can we? Can we use yes or no? Oh wait, we can. All right. Okay. If you, uh, yeah, yeah, there is yeah? a way. Okay. Do you guys want to? You just go to reactions, and then and then if and then if you click on the three dots, and you have all sorts of things. So we can yep. use checks for yes, and then a no entry sign for no. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so if you want to hear me uh, present one more problem, uh, you can give yes, or if you want to move on to Neil and hear what Neil has to. Yeah. So you were basically choosing between letting Justin do another problem or letting me drone out about inequalities. Uh, yeah, but uh, I will just note that, uh, uh, well, I don't know what time constraints after yours are like, but you'll hear Neil regardless, regardless of whether it's, it's not an either or, uh, you'll still hear Neil if I present that next problem, but any interest? Another one? That's one vote. Go ahead. Uh, Okay, Aaron, thanks. <laughs> Record breaking voter turnout. Another one works. Okay. Um, okay, that is very high voter turnout right there. Yeah. It's good enough, I think. <laughs> uh, um, some people are shy. Yeah. Let's mark the number just says number four. And here we go. It's another. So the problems we've done are uh, not coincidentally, they're all grid problems. They're problems involving boards and grids because this configuration offers a lot of opportunities for counting and maximizing and minimizing. But okay, so. In this problem, we have a 999 by 999 square table uh, where all cells are co colored white or red. And uh, find a maximum number of triples, C1, C2, C3, such that, well, like our second problem, we have C1 and C2 are in the same row, uh, C2 and C3 are in the same column, uh, but uh, C1, C3 are white, and C2 is red. Find the maximum value we can get. Okay, uh, it turns out, now, I don't know how obvious the equality case is, but I'm. it's been a while since I actually did this problem new, but, uh, it, it's probably less obvious than the past three problems. Um, but anyway, it still seems promising that we could uh, sum by the middle cell, or sum by S2. Uh, let's see. Uh, so they're at all, oh, they're. There, there are a couple of approaches you can uh, use for uh, counting this. You can either count by uh, pairs of white cells, or you can count by red cells. And uh, usually, uh, uh, yeah, I think it, uh, yeah, it turns out that the counting by red, well, okay, keeping track of things uh, by counting by red cells is generally easier because uh, if you just pick, if you count by white cells, uh, say you pick. A white cell here and a white cell there. First of all, they have to be not in the same row or same column, and you have to uh, once you picked what, what is it? Uh, C one and C C one and C three. You don't know if C two is going to be red. On the other on the other hand, if you count by C two, then you just have to keep track of how many uh, white cells are in the same row and column as that C two. So, like we did for number two, let's count by C2. Count 
by C2. As just a slight sidetrack, uh, you'll find uh, counting uh, or these types of counting. Uh, you'll you'll also find this in graph theory. So a lot of extremal graph problems involve uh, counting, and in, in particular, for example, if you want to count the number of cherries, which we call just uh, three points connected uh, by path of at two edges, uh, then you would count by the mil middle vertex, and that appears in a lot of problems. But anyway, that's a digression. Uh, let's let's do this. Okay, uh, so if we've got a if we've got a red cell at uh, i j where uh, we'll let this denote the i row, the cell that is at the i row in j column, i row, j column, then the number of triplets with c two with this red point being the middle point is just well, uh, this would be the number of white cells in the row of i and times the number of white cells in the column of j. Let's denote some, the, give some notation to this. Let a i be the number of white in row i and b j be the number of white, yes, in column j. So counting by uh, by c2, now we just have a sum over column j. So what is our sum, what is our value t? Uh, t is equal to a sum over red cells of a i times b j. Okay. Now, the problem we've got is that a i and b j are intermingled, and we don't know which i j are red cells. Uh, let's actually look back at number two to gain some inspiration. So. Looking back at number two, we also had the same problem. We didn't know we didn't know which uh, line, uh, horizontal lines and vertical lines intersected at a point. And what we did in that case was we just said, "Well, screw it. We don't. Let's just count them all. Count them all. And uh, counting them all allowed us to separate x and y, the horizontal lines and vertical lines, in our sum." because they're independent the, the so uh, without the condition of th this arbitrary condition of a meeting at a point uh, becomes a sum where uh, horizontal lines are independent of vertical lines so we se separate this sum into a product of uh, this product here and the rest was followed rest followed okay but the uh, we can't, in this case, we can't just ignore the fact that uh, we're, we're summing over red cells because if we sum over all cells, then that's going to way overcount this. We're never going to have equality if we do such a loose bound. But we still want to separate, uh, separate A sub I and B sub J. So how can we do so? Well, this is the main trick. This is less than or equal to, the sum is less than or equal to, the sum of a red cells of, so AIBJ is less than or equal to AI squared plus BJ squared all over 2. So this is less than or equal to 1 half of uh, AI squared plus 1 half of BJ squared. Good, and what this means is that, uh, well, first of all, these are separate s separate summations, and for each AI, you know how many times AI is summed. In particular, this would be equal to one half of C. Uh, AI is summed uh, 999 minus AI times. Why is that? Because there are 999 minus A1 red cells in the row i. 
So this would be uh, sum over all rows of 999 minus ai times ai squared, uh, plus the same thing for b, which is sum over all j of 999 minus bj times bj squared. Okay, and uh, this evaluating this becomes straightforward. Um, this, in, in fact, turns out to be equal to, I'm getting a, it says 4 times 999 to the 4th power, that's the correct degree, over 27. Okay, uh, when does equality occur? We can use what we did for our inequality to see when equality would occur. And equality occurs when AI and BJ are always equal. Uh, it turns out that you can uh, think if you have uh, three, let me see this. Equality, uh, yeah, so when you've got something that looks like this. So fill this all with red, fill this all with red, fill this all with red, fill all the rest with white, and that's your equality case, and you'll indeed get this. Okay, um, that's the end of me babbling. Um, you can listen to different voice, perhaps it would be more soothing, but uh, that's the end of what I have, or what I'll do. Any questions?